This 10th year of Daily Tech News Show is made possible by you, the listener. Thanks to all of you, including Pat, DeGratier, Daniels, and Erwin Sturr. Coming up on DTNS, AARP says gamers over 50 should be taken seriously, so we gathered some old people in Vegas to talk about it. <laughs> Plus, Be Real is letting you be slightly less real, as long as you're real at least once on time. We'll explain. This is the Daily Tech News Show for Monday, April 24th, 2023, live in Las Vegas, Nevada. I'm Tom Merritt. From the mouth I'm, of the Cuyahoga River, I'm Rich Straffolino. I'm early, and I'm Scott Johnson. <laughs> and uh, who are you? And, and I'm, uh, I'm Roger, the show's producer. <laughs> we also have with us Brian Ibbett, host of the long-running music podcast Coverville, co-host of the Morning Stream, Film Sack, and Soundography. Brian Ibbett, welcome. Thank you for having me. It's great to be here. And if you hear bumps, thumps, echoes, and people saying things in the background, it's because we're live with an audience in Las Vegas. Hello, everyone. Woo! <laughs> yeah, it's live. It's really live. <laughs> Uh, folks, the latest update to Google Authenticator adds a new app logo and support for syncing two-factor codes with a Google account. Let's start with the rest of the quick hits. The Financial Times sources say six months ago, ARM began work on a prototype chip based on its designs. The team making the chip is reportedly led by the former designer of Qualcomm's Snapdragon chips, Kevork Ketchichan. The team is also helping create performance and security improvements. However, it does not appear that ARM plans to sell the chip itself. Instead, they're using it just as a prototype to show customers what ARM designs can do. You know, when we talk about Netflix earnings and subscribers, it can be kind of easy to overlook the fact that the service is still extraordinarily popular. To that point, Bloomberg passed on some US TV viewing data from Nielsen and found some interesting findings. Uh, Netflix accounts for seven to eight percent of all TV viewing in the US every month in 2023. You may say, okay, seven to eight percent, what does that mean? Well, YouTube is the only other service that passes 4% in viewing time, with people watching Netflix more than Hulu, HBO Max, and Disney Plus combined. Netflix also accounted for 70 to 80% of the 10 most watched shows every single week. Now, competitors have uh, eaten into some of Netflix's dominance when we're talking about acquired content. We're talking about like maybe some uh, some older TV shows uh, that used to be on Netflix, maybe are on other services. Netflix still, though, does account for 50 to 75% of watch time in that category most weeks. That is down from like 100, so interesting to note that. In terms of subscribers, Paramount Plus, actually the fastest growing streaming service this year, adding 7.5 million subscribers between January and March. Netflix, in comparison, added 1.75. Million. Yeah. So in summary, lots of people still watch Netflix. <laughs> Turns out. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the U.S. Supreme Court has agreed to hear two cases regarding whether elected officials are allowed to block their constituents on social networks. So it, just the people who had voted them into office. Can you block the electorate? In California, two people filed a case when two members of the Poway Unified School District near San Diego blocked them on Facebook and Twitter. Now, they were making repeated posts, sometimes, you know, 40 of the same posts, and they were criticizing the school board members on issues of budgeting and how race is handled. In Michigan, a person filed a case when the city manager blocked him for his criticisms regarding the handling of the pandemic. Lower courts in California ruled in favor of the people in the school board case, as both school board members used their social media accounts in an official role. The Michigan case ruled that the city manager of Port Huron was not acting in his official role when he blocked the person on Facebook. So they ruled in his favor. So we got a split decision here. Generally, courts have ruled that if an account is being operated in an official capacity, it cannot block non-harassing or non-threatening accounts. No previous cases, however, have been heard by the Supreme Court. There was one against the president that they just decided not to hear. They said it was moot. The court also declined to hear an appeal from computer scientist Stephen Thaler. You may remember that's the one he filed against the U.S. Patent and Trademark Office when they declined to issue him a patent, well, not issue him a patent, issue a patent to an AI that he created, saying that the patent could only be issued to human inventors. So they will hear the cases about blocking uh, people in your electorate. They will not hear the one about giving an AI a patent. Well, one of the most visible signs of the recent wave of big tech austerity and cost cutting has mostly been around job cuts. I mean, we've definitely talked about them on this show, and they've been impacting most of the tech industry. We're also seeing this impacting, though, real estate development. CNBC reports that Google paused construction on its 80-acre downtown West Campus in San Jose, California. 
Google planned for the space to offer a lot of stuff. 7.3 million square feet of offices, 4,000 housing units, 50,000 square feet of retail and cultural space, and 15 acres of parks. Of course, San Jose Mayor Matt Mahan characterized this as Google reassessing the timeline for downtown West, not canceling it. We are not talking about canceling it. That's according to the mayor. But he provided no revised timeline for construction. So not talking about that either. Uh, the U.S. Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals affirmed most of a 2021 lower court ruling that Apple's App Store policies did not violate antitrust law by barring third-party app stores. So Apple won the second round. It upheld a lower court ruling in favor of Epic Games within the scope of California's unfair competition law. Epic had won that small part of it, so that stayed. Basically, what happened in the lower court stayed unchanged. Apple changed policies after that first court ruling to allow out-of-app communications. Basically, you can admit there are payment alternatives on the web. Uh, it also lets reader apps like books, photos, news, video, etc. point users to the web to make payments. Uh, Epic Games began this case in 2020. It's now uh, in their court, so to speak, on what to do that. And that is a look at the quick hits. All right, Canadian musician Grimes said on Twitter Sunday, I'll split 50% royalties on any successful AI-generated song that uses my voice, same deal as I would with any artist I collaborate with. Feel free to use my voice without penalty. I have no label and no legal bindings. Uh, this is in part to reaction to that Drake weekend fake that had came out last week. Uh, the Verge notes that experimental musician Holly Herndon has previously introduced her own artificial voice called Holly Plus, she introduced that back in 2021. Anybody can upload an audio file and get it converted into a version sung by Holly. Members of her DAO, that's a, a cryptocurrency thing, can actually make money off them. And of course, if you didn't already hear about that track that I was mentioning, uh, Drake in the Weekend, Universal Music Group has threatened to crack down on those, although it is varied in how it has cracked down on those. So it's interesting to see different artists taking different tactics on this technology. Ibit. Yeah, you have a lot of experience with music rights and being able to play covers on Coverville. And I such. do. Yeah, yeah I've, I've heard of music rights and stuff. So yeah. <laughs> what I what I like about what uh, Grimes is doing is not only she's you know making this great offer of saying yeah, I'll split the royalties with you. She's kind of saying she's drawing a line in the sand that says if you use my voice, I want fifty percent of yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. So it's it's, it's kind a of nice way. Of it's saying a very that. nice way. It's kind of like a little hidden way of saying that she liked to do that. Um, do I want to hear, you know, a new John Lennon song, you know, with the uh, AI? Do I want to hear, you know, artists of past with um, uh, songs that were using AI to recreate their voice, recreate their sound? I think, I think I just know in my head that it's fake, and I'd be just disappointed by the whole thing. As curious as I would be to hear the results, it would leave me feeling a little, you know, empty inside. Hundred percent agree with that. There's an artificiality to it that I don't think I could I could get with, but. Even with living artists. I, if, with it, living it artists, it gets interesting, yeah. right? Because mm -hmm. her saying, use my voice, I get 50%, you get 50%. She's basically saying, uh, yeah, go for it, and, and, and we'll work together. Something about that is really interesting. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if it's because she's alive and can make this decision or yeah. that she's label-less and can make this decision. Because a lot of labeled artists aren't going to be able to do this, and not right away, until labels embrace the idea. But... I kind of like that because I want to hear what the collaboration ends up being. If it's even truly can be defined as a collaboration, I'm not sure you can even do that because if they're going to do it without really her knowledge, just pay her for the 50%. Well, they'd ha that she'd have to have knowledge to pay. I guess she would, yeah. right. But is it a By true definition. collaboration, like a creative collaboration? I think what she's saying is with a, with a collaboration, I pay 50%. So if you do this, I'll also pay 50%. Mm. She's not trying to say it's a collaboration. Yeah. And uh, how about living artists? I was just saying, with yeah, with living artists, do they have to provide kind of a brand guideline? Like, these are words I will not say in my songs. So if you use AI to use to right. use any of these words or phrases or Some show Walmart or something, fine. you know. <laughs> well, that's actually, Ibit, you brought up a great point when you mentioned the word brand, because this is what it got me thinking of is that, you know, we, 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 you know, in the early 2000s, we saw music going from like product to service. And this is almost like musician, like, like very literally becoming a brand where it's like they're not even involved in this it's like the, the brand of their likeness is being used by an ai to create that and and I like i think that's it, it makes sense for someone as kind of you know grimes likes to try a lot of future facing kind of things to kind of be ahead of the curve on this and it's also interesting that she's saying that 
this she, this is not like a situation where if you're uploading this to your SoundCloud and it gets 10 listens, like she wants 50% of whatever, you, you know, the, for the 99 cents you sell it for, whatever, you know, whatever the case mm -hmm. may be. She's basically like, if I hear about it and it's my voice, then I want the 50%, but only if it's going like huge. It's not like, which makes it very murky, it probably even needlessly murky at that point. But I thought that was an interesting well, but it's all being like, defined like, right now. That's right. Yeah, that's yeah. Mm -hmm. that's it's gonna get it'll, it'll get weird before it gets settled. But uh, and by weird, I just mean somebody doing three TikToks with a song they kind of collaborated with in their own head and didn't really do much else and got very few views. No one's gonna notice it. It's not gonna really go viral, or maybe it will, but it, the potential's lower. But when you go big, then you have to start asking questions. You have to start deciding. Well, wait. Okay, so you do get 50%, but I said these words, are those the wrong words? Do we take those out now? Like, at what point do you mm -hmm. negotiate? It just seems... Well, yeah, we're making up yep. the rules now. Like, yeah. is this more like a sample where yeah. the artist has control? They can choose not to let you sample. They can say, well, if you sample, you have to pay me X amount, and it can vary. Mm -hmm. Or is this something that is more like a collaboration? And at which point does the person who uses the AI have to reach out to the artist and say... Here's what I've created before I go, you know, put it up online. Right. Some artists may will want any that. will yeah. anybody do that? Is the question. Well, you know, and also the, AI people. Why? What's to stop them from AI people? People that want to work with AI <laughs> to generate music. What if their goal is just to do something in this style of Grimes or in mm -hmm. this style of mm -hmm. I don't know Eminem or something, and they do that. In the way that, say, uh, the Gallagher brothers sounded a lot like the Beatles. Mm, mm -hmm. um, yeah. Nobody, everyone said, hey, they sound like the Beatles, but nobody was saying, the Beatles, you're going to owe them money or whatever. Will right. that still hold here? Right. You know? Right. So I got a lot of questions about that. It's, it's one thing when I intentionally say, yes, I was, in fact, imitating Drake. Uh, right. I was, this AI mm -hmm. was trained on Drake songs. It's meant to say Drake. Right. It's another thing if you don't admit that. You mm -hmm. say it's Drake. -ish. And try to say, like, oh, no, I don't know why it ended up sounding like Drake. Yeah. Right, right. right. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, complicated. <laughs> well, another thing that's complicated is social networks. That's something Be Real is finding out. You know, earlier this month, we're kind of are talking about, you know, maybe the bloom is off the rose for Be Real. People kind of getting sick of authenticity. So, Tom, I'm, I'm curious. You've been using the platform. Have you seen any issues with your feed personally? I've been using the platform for more than a year now. Uh, and... Uh, if, if anybody doesn't know Be Real, it's it's an attempt to be authentic. So you get a prompt. You have two minutes to post. If you don't post within the two minutes, you can still post. You just won't be able to see anybody else's posts until you've posted. So the idea is you want to capture what's happening authentically, not stage something. So if you post right with the no notification, you're playing by the rules, but it is going to end up being a lot of people looking at their laptop. Like just in yeah. reality, because that's what a lot of people are doing most days. If you wait to post, it might be more interesting, but it's less authentic. Uh, so I think that turns some people off wanting to post or it causes some people to not play by the rules and always delay their post. So they've been coming up with inducements to get you to play by the rules and post right away to keep the spirit of Be Real. They added Spotify and Apple Music integration uh, to share what you've been listening to, for example. And Rich, they added something else now, too. Yeah, they're trying out this pilot for something called Bonus Be Reels, uh, at least in the UK. And they're trying to like split the difference here, kind of give you the best of both worlds. If you post within that two minute window, you get the notification, you post within that two minutes, you get two other uploads that you can do that day, like at any time. They'll just go into your feed, they'll do the front and back camera kind of thing. You get two of those. If you miss it though, you still get a bonus, but it's only one. So there's like a little bit of an incentive, but you're not like really punished there. So it's an interesting idea. So, you know, Ibit, I'm curious, would this make you kind of look at and post more on B-Rail? It, it actually probably made me come back to Be Real. So I first heard about Be Real almost exactly a year ago from Tom here in the plaza, <laughs> oh, <laughs> showing yeah, it to me yeah, in, yeah, in the bar downstairs. Yeah. And so I started going I, some, somewhere along the line, six months in, eight months in, I fell off the Be Real wagon. Um, but this might actually make me come back because I'm curious, you know, about seeing, yeah, you know, I'm seeing a lot of people in GarageBand or in, in um, o Adobe Audition editing stuff. I happen to follow and share with a lot of podcasters, so I see a lot of that stuff. But then getting to see maybe a picture of them hanging out with their dog or, or outside going for a walk when they, when they actually have something kind of interesting, it would give some sort of um, frosting to the the cake of the, the original be real the here we go it's going to be a generic pound cake me working on a computer but now oh it's frosting you're taking the dog out for a walk mm, yeah so that's interesting that like it. gamified a little bit might not hurt my mm -hmm. whole thing almost exactly like you it was last year i heard about it it was you who told us about it mm -hmm. and i used it for about six seven eight months something like that and then 
this started happening. It would say, um, take a picture of what you're doing. And I would do that. And then it would say, show us you on the selfie cam. And I'd go, <laughs> no, <laughs> like, I don't want to. I'd aim it at a wall somewhere. And this I doesn't started, fix that. Though. No, it yeah. doesn't fix yeah. that at all. And so I wonder how much more I would use it because what often would happen is the times it wanted me or would prompt me to do it, it's like, I just got up, my hair's a mess, or I just feel gross, or I just don't want it to be like looking at my camera like, you know, a big dope. Mm -hmm. And so I quit using it in that way. And I think that was the spirit of the thing. The spirit of the thing is right. to be real, you know? Right. But I felt like ah, sometimes I don't want to be real. Sometimes I just want to point that at the wall and that's my face. And that's as good as you're going to get. And they even scold you on there for it. They'll say, a little bit, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, they'll yeah. say, by yeah. the way, we really like seeing your face. I'm like, well, yeah. too bad. You're too looking bad. at the wall. <laughs> Where is everyone? Is but I, I'm with Brian though. I think these are, these are interesting ways yeah. to, to dig up interest. And I, my, my, my question has been not only engagement, which this, this does address, but also monetization. Like yeah. what's, what's, be real's long-term plan and is it mm. to sell you more opportunities to take photos oh, get a third get a third be yeah. real mm. a day for x amount or, mm. does this mean also they're going to have to shift the time too earlier so that you've got time to use those additional be reels so yeah because sometimes they will they'll come for close together yeah yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, 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 I really love the concept. I feel like it just needs some some kind of special juice, and maybe this is it to yeah. get them going. Rich, well, you, I, you're pretty good with the B reel. <laughs> you're you're still into it. Do you even need this? Uh, yes, because there's definitely. I, I mean, I don't need it. My household needs it because there's definitely been times where it'd be like, oh man, we got kids' t-ball game. That's gonna be so fun. I hope that B reel or like we're going to Hamilton tonight. Like, would love to have that B reel right now. And it's like oh, it's me sitting at my laptop with the spreadsheet open again. So it's like, it, it just gets away from a little bit of the the ennui of it all. And it, I also think it would make the feed a little bit more scrollable because what I do like with Be Real is it's like a very in and out uh, a transaction, right? You, you're like, all right, I can just scroll through in like two minutes. I see what everybody's doing. I don't follow that many people because I only want to follow people that I actually know yeah, in yeah. real life. Uh, and like just a little bit more scrollability. I don't want to be like, I, I don't want the the mechanics of like I have to be going back in there, but I do like that it just gives you like that little bit like okay I can see oh walking the dog hey that's heartwarming but also oh you went to a cool concert tonight I am I am really glad you did that hmm. yeah and, yeah. and so, adding the stuff makes it more complicated and takes away from that aspect of it though. yeah I, it, I like rich's lifestyle of soccer and then go straight to the hamilton concert yeah. or the hamilton that's my show. life every night scott come on you know, yeah. you know. <laughs> i, I will i will say though i think I, be real might be feeling the need to juice their numbers they came out today and they announced they had two million daily active users i mean to me that sounds great but this comes uh, the verge was saying that back in october their sources were saying that was basically their daily active users back then so oh, we had so been no covering growth, no. a ton of explosive growth for them but they might be leveling out and looking for ways to get you know scott and ibit to uh you know remember yeah, that they have the app on to re-be real yeah. <laughs> <laughs> for for for, for ibit to actually uh have to log back in again mm -hmm. which, which he had to do which i had yeah. to do today in some ways it is literally they're asking you to do be real on be real yeah right? i could definitely like be real I yeah could... no we get it you guys get it okay I could definitely sure. see them taking like a Snapchat plus kind of approach to this where they don't necessarily tie it directly to bonus B-reels or whatever they're going to call it. But it's like, oh, you get this and maybe you can do like a live photo where there's a video element to this or, or you get experimental features. Like I've been thinking a lot about how they monetize Mark and not photos make to it. stick around longer and other paying subscribers can see them okay. or like animated reactions. I bet a ton of people would like mm -hmm. that, you know, so maybe they can. Let us add uh, ears, cat ears, and whiskers to our laptops that we're staring at in our B-reels. <laughs> they better not Just, add AI, because apparently the Snapchat users are rebelling against yeah. that. Oh, yeah, are they? Yeah, like yeah. You don't want to mess with them. Uh, well, folks, if you have a thought about B-reel or anything else, give us an email. You know our email address. Oh, you don't? Well, it's feedback at dailytechnewsshow.com. All right. Well, AARP, or the American Association of Retired People, as I like to prefer to call it, issued a study on gamers older than 50 years old. The study estimated that 45% of people in the U.S. older than 50 play video games at least once a month. That's 52.4 million people, which is, I think, a lot. There's also a bigger number than it was in 2019, and that 2019 figure was bigger than 2016. So we're seeing growing numbers of people over 50 playing them darn video games. 
The amount of time people older than 50 play games has risen from eight and a half hours per month in 2019 to 12 hours per month in 2022. So almost a 50% jump, definitely significant. Sure, if we dig into the figures, 73% are puzzle and logic games, while 12% are playing shooters. So that's probably more than I would have thought. But they spent an average of $49 on games in the first six months of 2022, which amounts to $2.6 billion. That is down, though, from $64 spent in 2019. So more people playing games, but maybe spending less. To, to do this story justice, we've gathered together three people who have played games and who are, from, from everything that I'm hearing, older than 50 for today's show. We are, as you might expect, in the city of Las Vegas. Uh, gentlemen, I'd like to get your perspectives on this study. What? 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 <laughs> I didn't hear any of that. Oh, no, no. Thank you, Rich. Um, yeah. So, uh, Scott, with that big jump in gaming, that, that happened around the time you turned 50? No. Uh, what's what's weird about this, it's easy for me to just see it from my perspective, and I realize there's more to the AARP landscape to consider here in terms of who they're asking and who's actually going to respond. I have a feeling a lot of hardcore over 50 gamers are probably not bothering with that that survey i could be wrong but it just sure. seems like something they wouldn't be interested in well, well i mean i would guess that they went did a random sample survey. probably they probably didn't just survey aarp members yeah entirely oh, possible benefit, entirely yeah. possible um in my case i've been playing video games since i was six or seven and it's never really stopped and it's every day and it's too much maybe sometimes but but my gaming habits are probably not they are on the upper uh, end of the of the of the far out idea like that's nowhere close to the median there um i'm i'm more curious like brian as someone who when you and i talk it's often about hey i found this rad new uh solitaire ish game mm -hmm. on on ios or something hey yeah. you should play it or whatever so we you and i aren't like shooters and strategy games and big rpgs and triple a games conversation we talk no. about the smaller stuff sometimes so maybe there's something to this I, you know, I think so. You. Yeah, for sure for me, because when I was 40, guess what I played? About 73% puzzle and uh, right. <laughs> logic games and about 12% shooters. So um, I don't think my taste in games have changed at all uh, over the years at all. I always tended to like puzzle games and, and quick pick up and put down kind of games. And, and I'd save the uh, first person shooters and the adventure games like that for when I had more time and, and that sort of thing. I, I'd really be curious as to what they consider an over 50 style game to be. Yeah. Well, um, they, they weren't. They just said, you're over 50. Do you play games? Right. What yeah. kind of games do you play? I, I, yeah, let yeah. me rephrase that. What they think, what they're, what they think a targeted, uh, um, you know, what they think would attract somebody over 50. Cause well, a, that, a big yeah. part of this was them saying, uh, these, these over 50 gamers don't feel like they're being targeted very well. They don't feel like they're being talked to or advertised yeah. properly or the games aren't necessarily being made for them anymore was some of the Yeah, I conceit. think the survey was meant to be like, all right, let's 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 see how many people in this cohort game, right. what mm -hmm. kind of games do they play? Right. And this right. release was saying, hey, folks, uh, you may not think of people who are older as playing games, but the number of people who are older who are playing games is getting bigger as people who grew up with games get older. Mm -hmm. So when it says only 12% do shooters, what I would be interested in, and I didn't get a close enough look at the survey to tell, is if you slice it a little closer, is it, you know, when you look at 50 to 55, is mm -hmm. it more like 50 or 60% mm -hmm. that play shooters, oh, I see right? What you're because yeah. the people who didn't grow up playing shooters who are 70, 80 plus, they're less likely to be playing them because right. they never did. Right. Right? Yeah. right. I The other thing I think is important to note here is I think this sort of stuff is going to run out of runway pretty quick. And the reason I say that is when you say 50 and older, you're often talking about 80s and 90s kids mm. who were the first big generations to have this cultural phenomenon in their lives in such a major way. We were the ones going to software, et cetera, and waiting for the launch of the PlayStation yeah, 1. Yeah. And we mm. were the ones waiting for all of that. And we're the ones that are really into ecosystems like Steam and Xbox and PlayStation and everything else. I feel like I feel like that that this this kind of questioning 10 years from now is going to be pointless. Because the forty-year-olds are playing even more than we did. Well, yeah, it's going to be about who's playing the brain implant game. Yeah, right, right, 50, right. You know, it's entirely possible. Whatever it is, but it, but it is interesting because as a kid, you you could never imagine your your aunt or your uncle, somebody in their 50s, 60s, even touching a video game. Mm -hmm. You had your outliers, like my grandma was eighty-nine and playing arcade games. She loved it, but that's rare, and that's that's doesn't seem like an impossible idea that the old 
the olds don't like video games. They don't understand it or it's technology or whatever. But I feel like that's we're past it now. So uh, let, let's turn to someone who has much less joint pain than us. Rich, uh, what are we missing here? <laughs> well, I mean, just just thinking about this, I, I don't know if 50 can be a, an intimidating number to some people. But I was like, that's not, you know, 1973. Right. Like that is that is you were growing up like you like you guys were saying in the golden age of, uh, of of like that that first second gen of video games you know atari nintendo like that kind of stuff when you were like in prime kid years right like not even not even you know it, it, with disposable income or something like that so really as what this says to me is like this is the start of video games being culture just in general and and scott perfectly to your point like this at, at this door this study becomes meaningless in 10 years when like everyone either grew up around it we're going to see all of our mass media turning to video games in in that way the one thing i am curious though about is that fall in spending like i mean you know that's like not like we're, we're seeing this huge uptick in like time playing people playing and then spending less is that just wider net oh gen, gen x is just smarter yeah that's, that's all it is <laughs> i think i actually have a theory about that i okay, think the theory about. is or the if i'm right about my theory is that there there are so many more free to play games that actually lead into their results about puzzle and you know thinking logic, games yeah. there's tons of those logic games on free platforms now and so they're spending less there's also lots of indies that match what those those categories are and those are 15 bucks those are 17.99 yeah, yeah. mm -hmm. i think that the the market changes in the depth of available content that's sub 69 dollars has expanded exponentially even in the last five years so i if i had to guess that is the reasoning for that lower price and, and i would add to that i think people are also getting a little smarter with freemium right. as we learn mm -hmm. yeah. the tricks mm -hmm. to avoid like paying a million dollars for donuts or whatever we're better yeah. at knowing which ones are you know it, it, whether marvel snap is a good example yeah, or not yeah, we yeah, know yeah. that because we're all kind of communicating We've about it because we we're know. internet savvy yeah. also we all of those things rose together and i i don't know next I would, 10 I would, years from now this thing means nothing to nobody I, I would say this also could significantly be underreported because I'm sure if I asked my mom or I asked my grandma, uh, you know, do you guys play video games? No, but I guarantee you they have 20 game apps solitaire. on their iPad. Yeah, and they play yeah. Solitaire mm -hmm. or Mahjong yeah. or like one of those fine. Again, I, I didn't look close enough at the survey design to tell. Usually they account for stuff like that. They try to phrase questions in a way that, that tease that stuff out. Uh, uh, totally unscientifically, who in our audience is willing to admit they are over 50 and plays video games? I'm curious. Yeah. Show hands. That's a good amount of hands out there. Yeah. Put your hands up, Tina. There's also you some play, liar. Yeah. You play Sudoku. You do... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, let's check out the mailbag. Yeah, we got a great email in from Tim the DBA. He's administering databases all day. He thanked us for the realistic view on the challenge of changing password managers and shared his story. He said when the last uh, last pass breach happened, he decided to switch to Bitwarden. Not uh, uncommon response. He says it wasn't the easiest migration, but we got it working. Now here is where I might have been able to show you up about how easy it was to switch. I went to cancel my LastPass account and delete my vault from their servers. And whoops, sometime in the past, I accidentally set up two automatic annual payments. I paid up through 2025. Being Ooh. too frugal was <laughs> for to waste on a paid service. I'm still on LastPass. Sigh. But he says, thanks for your continued great coverage about AI. Hi. Tim, thank you so much. Uh, yeah, thank you, Tim. Uh, that makes me feel a little better that a database administrator also <laughs> has, has run into these, these kind of problems. Thank you, Tim, for, for sharing that story with us. And thank you, uh, Scott Johnson, mm. uh, for uh, coming all the way to Las Vegas just to be on Daily That was all it was, yeah. That was, that was the whole reason. Yeah, no, I'm normally here on Wednesdays, and Wednesdays you know are my favorite, but I, uh, I think maybe Monday is pretty good this week. Here's, here's what I would like to tell people tomorrow here at this event, but also internationally because the Internet is a thing. I'll finally, finally be launching this Kickstarter for the card game I made. Oh, fantastic. Over yeah. at DungeonMurder.com. It took a Kickstarter forever for the approval process. Don't know why. Maybe there's a lot being submitted right now. But the bottom line is uh, tomorrow sometime I'm working on the exact time. But as soon as that drops, uh, I will blast that out. Let everybody know if you are interested in that at all. Uh, please head over to DungeonMurder.com for the details. You can also follow me on Twitter at Scott Johnson and uh, check out our live streams tomorrow if you're around because you'll hear a lot more about it and we'll be playing the game here in Vegas. So I'm very excited about it uh, and 
very happy to be able to tell your your listeners today. Fantastic. Brian Ibbett, what do you got going on? Uh, well, here in uh, Vegas with a bunch of uh, game show content that I'm producing, but back at it uh, when I get back to town at the end of this week for more Coverville, more uh, The Morning Stream, Film Sack, Soundography, all the stuff that I produce on a uh, and co-host on a regular basis. Yeah, make sure to check out our morning show because it's been going since 2011. We're at like well, almost 3,000 episodes. Yeah. And it's a great time because morning zoo shows are terrible. Mm -hmm. So we started one that is not terrible. Yeah, We're free range morning. We're not free no, range. No phony phone calls. No man of the box. Grass what is fed. It? <laughs> yeah. So check it out. All right. Well, also thanks. We have a triumvirate of new bosses today to thank. Over the weekend, we've got Jerry, we've got John, and we've got Steve. Makes our Monday yeah. special. Today. Jerry, John, Steve. Give Jerry, John, and Steve got a live audience applause. Well wow. done, Jerry, John. That, that is what. Well, wait, Tom. It's always a live audience. Don't ruin the magic of podcasting. <laughs> anyway, thank you. I mean, you, a Jerry. different live audience than normal. Thank you. Yeah. thank you, Jerry. Thank you, John. And thank you, Steve. Thank you all. You are now patrons, and as a patron, you get Good Day Internet, the extended show. Stick around, because we're going to talk about what is going on with Twitter Blue. Why are people who haven't paid, or in some cases even still with us, getting check marks? We don't know either, and maybe we shouldn't care. But we're going to talk about all of that on Good Day Internet. Stick around. Remember, you can catch us live on Monday through Friday at 4 p.m. Eastern, 2000 UTC. Find out more at dailytechnewsshow.com slash live. We will be back tomorrow. See you then. This show is part of the Frog Pants Network. Get more at frogpants.com. Diamond Club hopes you have enjoyed this program. <laughs>